Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about galvanized cooling towers and how to protect your investments. During this webinar, please feel free to answer questions or ask some questions uh, online using our chat function, and, and our, our technical team will answer as we go. So for cooling towers, there are different materials used in their construction. Uh, they can include anywhere from fiberglass to wood, uh, some are even stainless steel, but by far, uh, the, even, even across industries, uh, by far the most common material used is galvanized steel, especially in North America. Um, the idea of galvanized steel is, gives the impression or gives the vision that it's very corrosion resistant, which is true because a lot of the galvanized used outside in the atmosphere is exceedingly well protected against corrosion it lasts many many years but there's a difference between exposure to rain and sun and having galvanized uh, submerged in water especially industrial industrial cooling tower water where uh, the zinc coating really does not provide a very good protection against corrosion so that's that's what we're going to be talking about today so as i was mentioning so why is galvanized the most important Thing to use or talk about today is it's the, it's the middle of choice because of cost uh, really it's the, it's the, the cost of manufacturing the ease of manufacturing uh, the ease of installation that's why people use galvanized for most of the time uh, but there are inconveniences that come with with the fact of it of it being that cheap or that inexpensive relatively speaking is you do have limited corrosion protection uh, the, there are maintenance costs that are much higher than if you were to build something out of stainless steel or or fiberglass and uh, so there's a that comes with a limited uh, limited lifespan, and uh, if you if you look at it according to uh, American AWT, uh, the Association of Water Treaters, so they've they've published uh, uh, essentially a, a table here that gives you an idea of the different cost factors in rel in relative terms. So for uh, something built or a cooling tower built with galvanized steel, with, with a factor of one. Well, something built with uh, fiberglass is at least two and a half times more, more expensive, but you get the trade-off. You would double the lifespan, if not more. Uh, same as uh, using uh, treated wood and, uh, and concrete. You get up to 30 years uh, of, of useful life out of it, but there's three times the cost. So especially in comfort cooling and smaller installations, people really, engineers and firms will gravitate to, to uh, stay, uh, to galvanize metals, right? Because they're less expensive for, for costs. And they'll defer those extra costs of maintenance uh, further down to somebody else. So the galvanized cooling towers are made of different pieces and different structures. So the, the parts of the cooling tower that are often galvanized, you can have the hot water basin, you can have the cold water basin, the distributor lines. Uh, most of the time it's the structure, the basins, and uh, sometimes I've even seen some mist eliminators. Uh, not as often, but uh, but uh, they're also galvanized. And and I guess one of the very common ones and the most critical ones are the um, evaporative condensers and like food plants or things like that. Sometimes those those tubes, those condenser lines, are all galvanized. So they're they're very expensive pieces of equipment critical to heat exchange, and they need to be protected. So what is galvanized steel? Galvanized steel is essentially mild steel with a zinc coating applied to it. Uh, whether it's in a sheet form or a tube or a different structure, uh, it's, it's a zinc applied at the manufacturing site. Now zinc in its elemental form does not withstand corrosion at all. It actually corrodes very quickly and, and it's that corrosion that you have to use to your advantage. So what we're trying to do is, what you have to do actually is to passivate the zinc by creating a zinc oxide layer. That zinc oxide layer serves a, as a barrier to stop more corrosion from happening. It's, it is very tight, it is very impervious to, to more, more corrosion. So that's what you're trying to do. It's very similar to the um, aluminum, uh, aluminum. So aluminum siding, which covers many, many houses, uh, it lasts for years and years and years, despite the fact that aluminum corrodes very quickly. The reason it lasts such a long time is it, cor it corrodes and forms an aluminum oxide film that is a protectant, a protecting film. So that's what we're trying to do with zinc oxide. So on the left side of the screen, what you're going to see is an ideal situation. You have your base metal of, of steel with elemental zinc, and you have a very thin layer of zinc oxide, which is ideal for protection. On the right side is uh, 
what happens when you have a galvanized system that is not passivated properly. So your zinc oxide film was not created. Now this creates a film, it's not even a film, it creates a deposit that is very porous and does not offer any protection. And what this, what is, what's this called, okay, it's essentially called white rust, okay, because it's literally a type of rust and they use white because it looks gelatinous, it's soft, it's uh, very, very wet, watery, and, it, and it's, very, it's very porous, so the corrosion continues a lot. And you'll see the graphs on the right-hand side, you'll, you'll actually perforate through the zinc protection layer very quickly and hit your base metal, and that's when you really get damage to your, to your equipment. So that's something very important that we're trying to avoid at all costs with all galvanized systems. And what it looks like, these are real life situations of white rust. So you've got a, a, a structured wall with the white, I guess, spotted, spotted systems. In the center picture, you'll see an evaporator condenser that is not uh, in good condition. So there's a lot of damage being caused under these, under these conditions right now. So this is what we're really trying to avoid by creating a good passivation layer. So the question is, how do we do it? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss now is how do we prevent the white rust? How do we protect your capital investments and extend the life of the cooling systems? So first of all, we're gonna talk about how the galvanized is made, okay? In the past, uh, they used a hot dip process and the hot dip process was literally dipping uh, bile steel into molten zinc and then dripping it, dripping it dry and so it solidifies. And uh, those ended up with uh, a thickness of about three to six thousandths of an inch of zinc, which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot of zinc at the time. And also they used chromate treatment. So chromate is an extremely strong oxidant, which would really help create that zinc oxide film. And it, had, and it really created a nice passivation. So that, that was perfect. That's how they used to do it. Whereas now the, we use a more efficient use of zinc. It's very expensive and it's a continuous process, but that process results in a 1.5 thousandth of an inch thick zinc coating as opposed to three to six thousand. So there's a big difference there. There's no more chromate treatment, okay, which is great for the environment, but it makes it more difficult to create that zinc oxide film. And, and also they're made on demand. There's very little inventory with just-in-time inventory. So this, the, these galvanized pieces aren't laying in inventory, creating that zinc oxide over time in the atmosphere, which is perfect for it. So all these different things create a, a, less, a less resistant piece of equipment for you, shorter of expectant lifespan. So it's an absolute necessity to have a specific passivation procedure uh, done prior to putting it in operation if you expect to keep your equipment for the, uh, for the lifespan. Uh, this passivation, you'll be able to tell there's, a vi there's some visual keys to it, but the surface with a brand new piece of galvanized will be shiny, very shiny gray. And when it's done a full passivation in, in, the, in the right form, it's a dark, darkish matte gray. And you'll see that transition if it's done properly. And it's very really important to do. So now the question is, how do we go about doing it? Well, specific procedures need to be followed, and there are parameters that need to be controlled in order to get the bright passivation to, to, to happen. Among these are you need a specific water quality, you have to have oxygenated water, no stagnation, you have to have flowing water to help these reactions to happen. You have to avoid at all costs uh, halogenated biocides like bleach or bromine, and you have to have a properly designed water treatment program during this passivation period. It sounds simple at some times, but for experience, it's more complicated than you think because everything needs to be managed and controlled at the same time. So for the quality of water, we're talking specifically, pH needs to be within a zone. Alkalinity, we're talking hardness, calcium hardness. Chlorides need to be maintained. Sulfites need to be, sulfates need to be controlled also. And conductivity. All these together with a proper cooling tower program will help provide that passivation process. For in this graph you'll notice, or in this table, this is a, a source from AWT again, and you see these are the recommendations from three of the most common manufacturers of cooling towers, or galvanized cooling towers. And if you take a look at this, and you'll have a chance to look at it later, uh, but some of the specifics you gotta notice is that the, the, the recommendations are different from each manufacturer. You have variations from a four-week passivation period to 12 weeks. 
you have ranges of pH that vary, you have hardness levels that vary. So it's exceedingly important to maintain and to, to look at your manufacturer and what they recommend uh, so that you keep your guarantee and your warranty. It's, it's important to do. Uh, this is one of the first things that a lot of customers get in trouble with is they don't follow the recommendations and they'll, and they'll lose the warranty. Normal passivation procedures will run at lower cycles depending on the water quality. The other important factor we need to do is run with no or very low heat loads on the system. Uh, water consumptions will be too high, chemistries will be too expensive, but the, irrespective of that, the passivation process will not happen in very high heat loads. It's important to do. Uh, depending on the makeup of the water, the quality, uh, you may even have to add acid because of the restrictions on pH. Uh, zinc does not operate very well at, at high pHs and sometimes some raw waters come in at pH of 8, 8.5 and as soon as you have a bit of cycles you're, you're not respecting any of the recommendations from the manufacturers. So those are important things to do. The challenge is to maintain everything during the whole passivation pr process which is anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks and to maintain that over all, a long period of time needs needs some planning and it has to be done it cannot be done in a rush so the, one of the questions is we know why galvanized steel is popular because of the costs and the installations but you have to consider this chart this decision tree often sometimes it's not the right material to choose so what you, what you what i would recommend is look at the decision tree if you can't answer yes to all of these questions and get to the okay section consider a different material. Sometimes the water quality coming in does not preclude or does not allow for galvanized to operate over long periods of time. Sometimes you're in a, in a harsh chemistry environment, you have vapors coming from your chemical process that are going to destroy the zinc, zinc corrosion layer or the zinc protection. It's important and this has to be done up front but it, it's, it's always a balance between the cost of installation and purchase and the lifespan of the material. So in summary, we know that galvanized steel is often a good choice. We know it's the popular one, but it does require special attention to form that protection layer so that you get your expected lifespan of this. Make sure you implement and you plan for the pacification procedure before you put it into, into service. It's important. You'll avoid premature failures and it'll avoid a lot of extra costs. And I guess lastly is follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Uh, make sure you keep that warranty because we've seen often enough that the, war the warranty is not respected by the manufacturer because the passivation process wasn't done. So it's, it's important to look at all these things and uh, hopefully you found this uh, webinar informative. It was my pleasure to give it to you and next week there'll be, uh, we'll be discussing uh, controlling Legionella so tune in for, for that one also. Have a great day. Thank you.